Caddis Maximus here. This is a test and comparison of 10 different spade bits or spoon bits, flat bits. They are the general budget conscious wood drilling bits. One thing to mention is they do make long versions with very long stems. These all happen to be uh, standard length. They also do make short versions. This video is more of a tool fishing auto video. Uh, where I have 10 different ones that I've dug through in my collection. They all have slightly different geometries. And how they've all tried to improve upon what would be the very basic design this. is literally just a piece of seal that's been rolled flat. Had uh, the two edges ground with just a little bit of a chamfer so it provides a cutting edge. And then an undercut so the tip provides some kind of a drill bit. This happens to actually be an old Irwin speed bore and... Uh, Irwin has been making, you know, as I get more of Irwin's tools over, that have been made over the years, some of them were better than others, but Irwin was never, uh, I think, a absolutely top-notch tool company at really any point in history because these old speed bores were really just pretty cheap. These are the absolute most basic. I would think the very next step up from the most basic uh, are a couple different choices. I'm not exactly sure this brand, but the slight upgrade is that they've put... They've actually stamped it there just to provide a secondary kind of relief, as well as putting in these spikes. And I believe what these spikes are, as reading from the forums, is they provide a pre-cut just to help make a little bit of a smoother finish in the bore. They even have a master mechanic, which that stamping, that little under uh, relief area is just a little bit deeper and more aggressive. I initially thought it was just the same as this bit, but it is actually pretty de uh, pretty different. We have an old Miller's Falls version here, and this one's pretty nice because it, the cutting bit's actually a piece of high-speed steel. The rest of these are going to be some form of tool steel or carbon steel. And then they use this extra thick shank that it's been uh, brazed to. And I think as far as old spade bits, uh, as far as material quality, these are some of the very best. And we can see their modification where they have their two, they kind of, instead of doing the spikes, it was perhaps an early version of that where they have this deep slant there so that each of these corners uh, are engaging a, a little bit sooner and I believe to further help improve the finish quality and this is only one of these Miller Falls I've ever seen but I thought that was pretty impressive uh, high-speed steel uh, spade bit this is the kind of spade bit that could take uh, lots of extra speed and probably last quite a long time we have the current speed bores, which are similar to these other two that, that I've pointed out where they just do kind of stamp reliefing, but on the new version of the speed bore, it's actually uh, pretty deep. And so they seem to just continue to make that little undercut deeper, deeper, and deeper as time goes on, at least as far as the cheap bits. I did just review these uh, Bosch Daredevils. These are indeed forged because they have to... Uh, hammer out this shape and then they are self-feed. These are probably some of the best of the, the modern bits that you can currently get. And here's what the older Boshes look like. They've been doing that self-feed bit, but they used to be a bit cheaper and this is indeed a old Bosch. But they're still pretty nice. They had the nice pre-cutting tips. They had uh, some nice folding there just to, instead of the stamping, it maintains a full cross section. So I kind of like that a little bit better. And then of course, their coarse cell feed tip course I should say and then I'll kind of go through these last three uh, these are some of the highest quality ones and I only know the brand name of one of them and I'm sure they're all old but this one's interesting because one it's an expensive manufacturing process because they're welding a piece of steel onto a shank which is a whole extra step they were simple but I kind of like these because they have a very very slim and narrow head and then what they do to provide relief or additional I should say the term is rake angle so that it cuts more efficiently. They just twist a piece of metal and then they bond it. So I thought this one was kind of interesting. And then I have, besides the current Bosch Daredevils, which I think are the, some of the best ones you can get on the shelf today, here are a couple of old ones. This brand I do not know, but it's obviously been uh, forged because you can see the forging markings here. This is obviously a much higher quality one. It's pretty thick. Uh, the tip is really thick. And then... As far as rake, it actually kind of has a design that's getting more towards what a other types of wood cutting bits, such as self-peed bits, have, 
where it has this long leading area. This actually is real similar to many uh, kind of wood augers. So they've integrated a much more complicated and thicker geometry. It's a, it's a thicker, heavier duty type of bit and really is pretty high quality. So we'll see how that cuts. These are all reasonably sharp and I'll be running them at 1200 RPM. And this is a planator or plantor. I always mispronounce their name, but these used to be famous decades ago as some of the most uh, aggressive and fast cutting uh, as well as durable wood bits. These are self feeding kind of a combination between a, a self a traditional self feed bit and a spade bit. They have this large forge section, which really is more like a spade bit. It has two little tips. It just happens to have a very uh, steep and drawn uh, rake angle there and very wide sides. Uh, these do get a little hotter because there is more friction. And they used to, they had made these in all sorts of sizes. And they were always notorious where if you got them a little bit too far sideways, this big broad uh, surface here would just jam right in the hole, especially on the large ones. But many people swore by these and, and believe as far as styles of bits that are similar to spade bits, this was probably the best that a spade style bit ever got. Anyway, I'm going to do a quick drilling performance and then I'll show the whole finishes between all these bits here. Okay, I'm using the Porter Cable 2620. This was a big competition to the, uh, that Milwaukee 222, that 1000 RPM Carpenter's drill. Porter Cable did step it up a bit. This is 4.5 amps at 1200 RPM and it should be pretty good. I'm not going to drill very deep. I'm going to drill, just try to drill like an inch, maybe two inches, so I can use a flashlight so you can see how good the uh, finish is on the bottom of the hole. But I'm just going to go along, drill the series of holes with these 10 bits, and then line them up and take a closer look. And we'll start off with the new uh, Daredevil here. But we'll let you watch all the drilling, so it's kind of fun. And these are all 7 eighths. A couple of the ones are a little bigger. That's the best I could do. All right. The self-feed bits. The one thing I do, I forgot to mention, is once they're screwing in, it's, kind of, it's hard to like stop and try to pull it out because it has screw threads on it. And it does make it a little bit more difficult where you do want to go partially through because you have to reverse the drill to get them back out. I need to get some more dimensional lumber because these bits are really made for, you know, doing through holes as opposed to blind holes, which are holes that you don't go through. But they are still the most common type of bit, so many times people are using these to do blind holes. Now I kind of like this one better because you get a little bit of the self-feed. This is the older style Bosch, but it's not so much that you can't just stop and pull the, the bit out when you need to. To so the Irwin speed bore. Now that Miller's Falls bit. That could probably use some sharpening. Here's the master mechanic one. The oddball one, slightly bent here. And really dull. Actually doesn't feel that dull, it just didn't really want to cut very well. Here's the Irwin Speedbore Original. This is what just a this the most simplest spay bit of all how it drills. Not particularly great. Now for the oddball welded bit. Ah. One more time, firmly tightening the bit in all three chuck holes, like following my own advice. Imagine that, tightening in all three holes and it doesn't slip. This time's using this really nice uh, forged bit here. I just call it the forged bit.
It needs to be sharpened, but man, it was actually making a pretty smooth hole. And here's our infamous planetor, which should be uh, about as aggressive as we get, more aggressive than even those Boshes. Let's take a look here. I'm, I'm going to be prepared because these things do, even when they're small, like to grab if you're not uh, watching what you're doing. But as you can see, you, this is pretty much the fastest bit besides that Bosch Daredevil. Actually, it was probably a little bit faster. A little bit of freehanding here. It's much easier to show you a close look. I've got all these bits lined up with the holes that we drilled. Things that I am noticing is that the bits that have the worst or the least aggressive geometry actually leave some pretty nice smooth holes and it just must be the nature of those types of bits. These earlier bits I started out with, like the Bosch Daredevil, actually does leave a pretty smooth finish given how fast it runs, but it isn't as smooth as some of the others. And Gosh, this flashlight pulsing is worse than just this overhead light <laughs> there we go that would be the older style Bosch the newer Irwin Speedbore which actually didn't do too bad at all and part of this is like this is an inch bit here and so it may have been a little bit too much speed the high speed Steel Miller's Falls did pretty nice the Master Mechanic not so great then we have the two older ones this funky welded one did all right, but it was a little bit rough. We can see that this one here with its really nice geometry, both I could feel that I wasn't putting very a lot anywhere near as much pressure on it, even though it has no kind of self-feed, and it left a real nice hole, and you could hear the tool. It wasn't working as hard. And then here's the hole that's left by the plantor, if I can see what I'm doing here. It's really just an aggressive bit. When it first screwed in and grabbed it actually tore up two notches on the surface of the wood I mean that's how hard it struck the you know the face when it started going in and it really actually kind of tore up the hole and this is actually a pretty good one this one is really pretty sharp and uh, but man it tore through it it tore through it basically as fast as a daredevil down here did and these planetors are much heavier duty and they've been around, well, they were, they, you know, they were around 50 years ago. I think they went out of business in the 90s or something. And I'm surprised nobody's really come out or with any kind of copies because these are really awesome bits. As we can see, they do earn their reputation. For all those years back, these were probably, for their price, uh, some of the fastest wood drilling bits you could get until really modern times with, like, one of these. It's kind of curious, and that was kind of the whole point to this video is to show that really spade bits aren't spade bits. Some do leave nicer finishes. Some you have to really press down hard. Even though this bit actually left a nice finish, I was practically standing on the drill. I can also see with this Miller's Falls where it has really rudimentary geometry just being made out of really hard high-speed steel versus the rest of these. Uh, proved uh, to be good because it left a really nice hole. Going to show that it isn't always all about geometry. It's also about the, the grade of materials too. If you really combine them both, then that's when you have truly awesome stuff. Anyway, that was just a little video about uh, flat bits and just showing different ones and kind of how they perform. And it's always neat to be able to put a collection like this together because it's kind of hard to find a bunch of these. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. And don't worry about Tiny. I'll try to get her in more videos. She's actually a bit older than I think most people realize. She's like 9 or 10 years old, and that's actually quite old for cats. And she's starting to get some deflated tires, a little bit of sore hips. So I try not to harass her too much, but I'll get her in more videos. Until next time, Catus Maximus out.